Hey guys, Bond25 here, watching the launch of CSO1. It's up in Ariane Spas, Soyuz. There we go, the first of the umbilical terrace is retracted. A tous de DDO, attention pour le début de la séquence d'allumage du lanceur. Great, you've zoomed in on the fairing. Top. A 0 moins 20 secondes. Second umbilical is retracted. Ignition of the Soyuz, I do believe. Or is that just some venting? Yep, that's definitely an ignition. Engines are full power. And lift off of the Soyuz, carrying CSO-1 into a sun-synchronous orbit. Well done, we've got blurry cam. This is not the most useful camera, we see the flames of the rocket. Right. Which is coming out like normal, you can actually start to make out the silhouette of the booster now. Well, booster launcher, and you get my point. There we go, you can see that. I don't know where that would be from, where that view is from. It looks pretty cool. Don't know what that noise was. I believe the vehicle is going supersonic and. Is it around max Q? Because usually that's when those, um. That's when that type of smoke is formed behind the vehicle. But once again, I am only guessing. I'm just. Bonne stabilisation du lanceur. Still no idea what that means. I still don't know quite. What is they? It's a single satellite. It's a single satellite. There is no we. Soyuz blazing a trail across the skies here at the Guiana Space Center. Heading out north over the Atlantic. Booster separation, you can see the quarter left cross. Superb images there of the boosters being jettisoned. See how they twist and turn, all part of the plan. Just call it the quarter left cross. That's what it looks like from up there. We had cameras on a previous launch. So this isn't live, by the way, just for those of you who think it is. Or, like, you know, from this and launch we're now looking broadcast. at the dot in the middle there, the engine of the main stage, which is propelling us. But it's the only thing that's propelling space. you at the moment. The Soyuz flying away from us. Yeah, if it was flying towards you, that would be a... Superb that would be bad. <laughs> to be fair, remember, Soyuz is you know, based on the R7. Which was... Stage which was intended as a missile. Everything is going according to plan. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Top right hand side of your screen, the trajectory. Yeah, I'll, I'll hang around for the separation That's just the because um. Of the vehicle, the plan trajectory, with the cross being the actual position of the launch vehicle. Because Take a look it's at not the front late of the vehicle there, the pointy section. We saw it before. It's called the fairing. Our satellite is in there, and if you work your way down towards the middle section, yeah, that... quick look there, the orange section, there's an open section, an open lattice section. That's because the Soyuz uses a hot staging, because the Russians weren't sure if you were able to ignite, ignite the engines in the, the fairing orbit. was protecting our satellites from... Our satellite from the rigors of the launch. Someone's used to come dating on our own five. How loud it was at liftoff back there, protecting us from acoustic vibrations and from friction. Friction as we were coming up through the the dense part of the atmosphere. <coughs> now look at our altitude. We are 122 kilometers yeah, well above, above the Kármán line at this we've, stage. Uh, actually, gone beyond what we call the Kármán line, which is the border with space, and we hardly have any friction now. So we're coming up to the 
point where we can start the process of jettisoning our fairing because the name of the game is to lose fairing weight. separation the scheduled moment, the scheduled moment to jettison the fairing we'll get the confirmation of that later once again on board oh, camera look at that. from Great. those flight. images from uh, previous previous well. launch and we have confirmation that the fairing has been jettisoned and we can see our satellite and we're very close to the separation of the blockade which is the core booster now that open section in the middle it's about to do its job it's uh, because we could we use a hot stage technique to switch and on separation the of the third stage Jilled, of course. we jettison the, the second stage and therefore we need that open area to evacuate and you can see the post basically otherwise you just be putting a lot of hot away. gases into an enclosed space and what so you have there is an explosion and we have confirmation that that's now been separated. The tracking station here at the Guiana Space Center, Galio, you can see it there, and you can see our flight path. The little sort of star, if you like, is our launcher, heading up toward the next tracking station, which is Bermuda. Then San Hubert. In Canada. Uh, he's telling us that everything is going nominally, everything is going according to plan. Our altitude, 184 kilometers above the Earth. Our distance, now that's uh, the distance from distance along a straight line along the, the Earth, I presume. If you were to draw a straight line. Because otherwise, you, uh, eventually you just start getting across closer. the pad from the uh, uh, lift off from the pad, if you like, to. Point is over the earth. Ignore that. And our speed on the bottom right. Everything going according to plan. Our speed ah, for torps. Uh, Four kilometers and sixty four point six four kilometers. Per yes, that was Igor showing me how you can get Subnautica again. for We're free legally. Five kilometers per just would like to specify that. Not I'm not hour. talking about torrenting it. Here's an overview of what's going to be coming up and the major milestones. After lifting off from the Guiana Space Center, the flight of the three lower stages of Soyuz will last about nine minutes. Then the upper composite, made up of the Fregat upper stage, the adapter, and the CSO-1 satellite, will separate from the third stage of the launcher. The three lower stages and the fairing will drop off into the sea. Fregat will perform two propulsion burns before the separation of the satellite. First burn of about nine minutes. Followed by a ballistic Basically, phase immediately of after launch of the first burn. And a second burn of about one and a half minutes, followed by a second ballistic phase of about five minutes. The CSO 1 satellite will then be separated on its dedicated orbit one hour and 44 seconds after liftoff. At the end of its mission, Frega will be placed on an orbit safely below the satellite orbit thanks to one more ignition of its engine. So that's what's coming up. Now our flight path takes us north, heading up over the Caribbean, along the east coast of the US, we cross the Arctic, and we come back down to the southwest coast of Australia, where we'll be starting the process of separating our satellite. The whole thing takes roughly an hour. We heard an overview of that from Stefan Israel earlier. We're using telemetry to track our vehicle. Basically, for anyone who's not familiar with that, uh, during the flight, Soyuz sends information to the ground stations along its path, and they then send that data here to the teams at the Space Center. And that's a, this allows them to monitor the flight in real time, so that's how we get the confirmations that the range operations manager is calling out. Uh, it also allows them to make an evaluation afterwards. And separation, and there's going to be a bit of cool space so before the fregat the ignites. Scheduled moment for the third stage to burn out and be jettisoned. We'll wait for the confirmation of that. Separation partie haute. And we have the confirmation 
but it has now been jettisoned. And we're Attention thinking... Attention on the telemeasure lanceur by the sta station of the Bermudes. And we ha also have confirmation that we've now picked up this signal at the tracking station in Bermuda. That's in the Caribbean, and the Caribbean ladder of islands. And we're seeing key moments happening as they are scheduled to happen at the time they're scheduled to happen. We get the actual Not confirmations live. of those from the Basically local operations what they're manager just a little bit later. That's perfectly normal. That's because the data from the launcher has to go via Moscow for validation before arriving here at the CSG. Premier allumage du de l'étage frégate. And he's just announced that we've had the switch on of the frigate upper stage engine. That's what it looks like. The the frigate is that gold for. structure. That's what's left now of our launcher. And it's getting, it's uh, switched its engine on. So we're really starting the next phase now of the journey. The frigate upper stage is a little bit like a taxi driver. They say that every launch. I'm just going to tell you that. To deliver our satellite to its drop-off point in space. And we call that special place the separation orbit. It's the orbit into which the spacecraft separates. It's not complicated. Uh, the guests here watching the launch from the mission control center. Now, if we just uh, take a look on the right-hand side, you can still see the image of the frigate upper stage. So we, we're looking here the, the structure frigate. In the middle is uh, a, the dispenser, and then on the left-hand side, we can see our satellite. And there you can see on the right-hand side our uh, trajectory on the top, uh, and our, our flight path, if you like, a sort of a visualization of where we are on the planet. We in I'm the sure that is the, the flight path. Station of Bermuda, we're flying out across the Bermuda. Atlantic, heading towards our next tracking station, which will be the Saint Hubert, Saint -Hubert, Saint -Hubert tracking station. That's yeah, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that properly. I think with Saint Hubert, tracking station to pick us so that's up. the closest thing I will ever and get to pronounce correctly. The CSO satellite orbital space component of a program called Muses. We'll be finding out more about that later. Uh, but in the meantime, the satellites will replace the French Armed Forces Helios satellites. Fair and enough. They are high resolution. The CSO satellites are high resolution reconnaissance satellites, which will give the military detailed images of what's happening on the ground. And the CSO program is for the French Ministry of Defense's Procurement Agency, the DGR. We're going to hear from them now. Today, military space applications are clearly vital for assuring our independent strategic decision-making capability and the conduct of military operations. Discreetly hinting at American idiocy. That's why the I do defense believe. spending plan for 2019-2025 intends to devote a significant budget to them. In 2022, we're going to renew most of our military telecommunication satellites, signal satellites, and of course our observation satellites, what are signals intelligence satellites? Because I really don't know. We'll then be orbiting two more CSO satellites, the third of which is planned to launch on the new Ariane 6 vehicle in development. Fair enough. Starting in 2023, we're also going to prepare the successors to these satellites, particularly for signals intelligence, but also for observation. Does that just intercept enemy signals? We'll begin building on these systems, including the third communication satellite and we'll be complementing our capabilities through this defense spending plan with geopositioning assets so Galileo for that we'll be using the European Galileo system for a program called Omega that program will so give our forces a satellite positioning capability independent of the US GPS system like I said we obviously want to pursue this effort Independent under our defense spending plan with our European <laughs> partners, and we're going to ask them to join us on all of these programs wherever possible. And during that film, uh, we heard from the range operations manager that we have confirmation that we've now flown into the range of the St. Hubert tracking station, or Saint Hubert, which is in Canada. So the guys and girls there have picked up our signal. They're tracking our launcher as we speak. And 
The uh, town of Saint Hubert is just outside Montreal in Quebec, Canada. Of course, it's Quebec. It has to do with the French, it's Quebec. The Canadian Space Agency has its head office in the borough, setting off now over the northern hemisphere towards the North Pole. I don't know why, but that's the way she said the Northern Hemisphere sounded the really odd. It sounded almost like it was an the insult. The CSO is very much a national program, although the services will also be available to some of France's partners. So it's logical that the French Defence Procurement Agency, who we heard from just now, the DGA, chose the French Space Agency as Can the ask. contracting body to provide both the satellites and the launch services. In fact, the French Space Agency is actually called CNES in France, which stands for the National Centre for Space Studies. And as I said earlier, teamwork yeah, is pretty responsible for isn't it? an awful <laughs> lot of things in space, and uh, the CNES has been responsible for many important and exciting space programs. Wait, the we CNES? Always with, uh, you don't... You, surely you, you would just... Now that. This is just how I would do it. But surely you would say CNES. Like, you don't say the NASA. If you get what I'm saying. Now, for more on their space defense systems and the CSO program, as well as their broader range. The launch of this first CSO satellite is a key milestone in our military space strategy that highlights the three facets of how CNES is serving defense applications. First, CSO draws on the heritage of everything we've developed since 1986 with the Spot, Helios, and Pleiad satellites. And we'll continue to do that since we're now working on Ceres and the next generation of Syracuse. Second, CSO illustrates all that is best about France's space technology capabilities. CNES, in partnership with the French space industry, has developed the marvel of technology that is CSO-1. And I believe we can say it is the envy of the world. Is it? And third, this evening's launch is only a start, as CNES's undisputed expertise will be supporting a whole series of operations once the satellite has been sent aloft and then begins its service life. All of this will show how effectively CNES is supporting our defence community. Good for you, France. Wonderful, isn't it? Some really uh, fantastic programs there. Really high tech and very, very exciting work that's being done by the men and women uh, in the space world. And here we are looking at these beautiful images of our satellite attached to the upper stage there. We saw them. Look on the right hand side of the screen, you can see it there. Just a quick uh, description of what we're looking at. The uh, <coughs> frigate upper stage to the left, which is burning its engine, it's a circular structure with six spherical tanks, four of those for propellant. I presume two uh, um, fuel, two of those two for avionics, that's the kind of thing you find on the aeroplane, the flight control systems, navigation. Does that tell it thing. where to go. Very well, but in the middle is a sort of a, a round circular uh, disc structure, and that's the special adapter or uh, dispenser, as it's sometimes called, which is attaching our satellite. And then in the front, the white structure is our satellite, CSO-1, and it's got four solar panels. You can see two of them there, all nicely and neatly folded up. Those are going to unfold later when the satellite is separated. Now, the CGI images that we're looking at are a simulation of what's actually happening up And it's also space. based on the scheduled so time event, it's not the actual. Simulation, but basically what happens is the Exactly the same as what happens on the thing. an incredibly detailed program of events which they then put into the computer. And the computer makes the images. generates these uh, lovely images for us to be able see, to see. I know how things work. Really I've watched enough Ariana Spass launches. The up a stage from behind. And, uh, and basically every movement, every uh, white flash, every burn of an engine that you see is, is what has been scheduled to happen at this moment. In and okay, that's a scheduled shutdown of the fr fregat. I think little white things that we can see there may be the nozzles which help the frigate upstage to move around. And some of those are what are what uh, mounted the fregat to the, 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 the gas. What's the word? The Soyuz. 
correct me if I'm wrong with that, but I think that's the way it uh, maneuvers itself. So as it I have corrected around, you. Get a great view there of the satellite. Yeah, the, uh, you know, I think it's I will. It's getting ready now to. Uh, I was about to say it's getting ready to switch its engine off, but it's actually now done it. We right, have so that you know, I'll, I'll pause the, the video. See you once we once. So see you back the again for the. Computer has sent the command that's what I'm looking for. Engine. It knows because of various so things. The separation. Uh, it see knows you where it's using space. Uh, 